Yo, Kitface Guy here. Hey, so I want to talk to you guys about what speaker phase is and what time alignment is because it's something that you can use in both car audio and, of course, home audio. And it's a really important piece of audio to make sure you understand in order to get the best out of the speakers that you have right now, especially when it comes to bass or subwoofers. So if we're going to get phase correctly, we need to understand what phase is. So speakers, they reproduce sound, right? You have a cone and essentially they move forwards and backwards, creating a vibration. If you have multiple speakers, then you have multiple waves of vibration. This makes more sense with subwoofers. If you have a lot of subwoofers, then you have a lot of waves moving forward and backwards. And you want them to be typically in phase, meaning that they move in the same direction at the same time. So if I have subwoofer one and subwoofer two or speaker one and speaker two, I want them to move in and out the same direction at the same time. If you are out of phase, then they move opposite of each other or slightly opposite of each other depending on how out of phase they are so a speaker that's in phase with another speaker is moving at the same time a speaker that is out of phase is moving against each other so that's in a nutshell what phase is getting speakers to move at the same direction so on the back of your subwoofer for example you're gonna have a phase switch 0 to 180 or if you have a higher level subwoofer you may have a dial 0 through 180 or you may have a DSP that allows you to change your phase 0 to 180. Typically, variable is what we call this. That's typically what's the better version of phase because you're able to fine tune and dial in completely. 0 to 180, a switch is pretty much negative and positive polarity. But if you can change the variable phase, then you can really lock in that bass or that speaker to make sure that it sounds its best. The same thing applies to car audio. On your subwoofer, if you car audio nerds were wondering what, what is a phase switch, what is this doing? Well, in car audio, it may not make too much of a difference, but it can, but it has the same effect. You switch it zero to 180 and you listen for what sounds the best. So now that we understand what phase is and what that switch means, how do we know how to set it? Now that we understand phase a little bit better, we need to know how to set phase. And for me, I'm gonna speak in terms of the subwoofer because this is the one that's gonna matter the most to you most likely. So this really only becomes more important when you have multiple subs because you need to make sure all of them are in phase. And for me, I have three of them. In your receiver, you may see a setting that says normal or reverse. That is the same thing as zero or 180 degrees on your phase switch. It is essentially a phase switch in your receiver. You don't want to set your phases in two different places, meaning if you have the option to set it in your AV receiver or your preprocessor or your DSP, set it there. But do not set it also on the sub because you will pretty much reverse what you've done. So if I go to my receiver and I switch my phase from zero to 180 and then I go and set my sub, from zero to 180, well, I went back to zero. I've made a full circle back around, so now I'm back on zero, even though both my settings say 180. You wanna set your phase in one spot. For me, I typically use my receiver or AV processor if I can, otherwise, use your sub itself. Now, phase is most important in the subs, especially if you have more than one, I have three. So how I decide if phase, what phase setting I should choose. Well, one, I'm lucky enough to have an Anthem AVM70 that does an incredible job at setting my phase for me, but I've learned over the years how to kind of get around doing it yourself. So I like to sit down in my listening position, and if I have a sub up front, I usually leave that at zero to start. Normal, zero degrees, whatever. Leave it at normal. If you have another sub, play with that one. I like to kind of just change my dial, and I'm turning it five degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, back down, back up. And what I'm listening for is an increase in bass. That's the big, a big telltale sign that you're in phase is that there's a lot more bass coming back. The, the vice versa is also true. If you're changing your phase and the bass starts to disappear, well, you're becoming out of phase with that sub. So for me, I like to take, if I have three subs, I leave my main one on and turn one of the other ones on as well. And I start to turn that dial until I hear the most bass possible. And then I keep going until it starts to decline and then go back until it's back up to its loudest point. And typically I'm now in phase, at least with those two subs. So now I move to sub number three. 
I'll turn off that second sub, turn on third sub, and I'll listen to it between those two subs, and I will turn the volume or turn the variable up and down until I get the most bass. And then I'll turn on all three subs and see how they pair together. Typically, you can get away with this idea. The best thing to do is just to measure. If you have a microphone of any type or have the means of getting one, you can download a free software called Room EQ Wizard, plug your mic to your laptop, put it in your position, and measure your subs to see on a graph visually what's the loudest output. That's the easiest way to really know if your phase is set correctly if you don't have any other means to do so. So that's how I like to do it, is just see or hear what I kind of know what I'm listening for because I've done it so many times, so it's easier for me to set it than to explain it. But that's typically a good rule of thumb. If your phase is out of phase, then you're going to have no bass. If your phase is in phase, then you're going to have plenty of bass. Now there may be times where your speakers are slightly out of phase and you can't really tell which one's better, zero or 180, positive or negative you know, normal or reverse. Sometimes it's so close together that you may not hear a difference. And at that point, just set it and forget it. Put it on normal and leave it alone if there really isn't a difference from normal or reverse. But that's where the variable comes from. That's where it's really nice to have a variable because you may be looking for seven degrees, not zero, or 10 degrees, not zero, or maybe you want 170 degrees, not 180. So if you can get a mini DSP or something that allows you to set variable phases, it'll really enhance your bass. So if you have multiple subs in your room and you're wondering, why do I have three subs in my room and I'm not getting bass? It's probably because things are out of phase or because you need the time align. Let's talk about that. So time aligning and speaker phase are totally different things, but they serve the same purpose. It's to make sure that all your speakers reach your ear at the right time with the right amount of volume and that's all that it really is to it. Time aligning, it literally is in the name. You are aligning the time that that sound hits your ear in the position that you're gonna sit. Same thing applies for car audio. If you're sitting in your driver's seat, you can time align your speakers. Usually what you wanna do to time align your speakers is to measure how far they are, first and foremost. For example, car audio, if you have an aftermarket head unit, you can set your distances. How far is your head from each speaker in your car? And then you can set that and then the head unit will automatically set you know, your delays and things like that. Same kind of concept in home theater. Distances is a good start to getting time alignment taken care of. You wanna make sure that your tweeter over to your head is the right distance. So sit down in your seat and grab a laser, I like to use a laser tape measure, but you can just you know, string the old school one out, point it towards your tweeter on each speaker and measure the distance from tweeter to your head level and put that in your system. That is step one to time aligning your system. Make sure that all your distances are as correct as possible. Reason being is because some speakers are further away than others and they need to make sure that they are reaching your ears at the right time and at the right volume. So if you're sitting much closer to a speaker on the left than you are on the right, you need to make sure that you have those distances set so that they still reach your ear at the same time to the brain at the right volume to the brain as well. So that's step one, get the distances correct. So time aligning doesn't just end there. Have you ever seen tower speakers that have a weird curve where like the bottom is like, like this and the top is kind of like you know, tilted forward or maybe the whole speaker is tilted forward or maybe a tall speaker is tilted down? That is also time aligning. And if you have maybe speakers on, you know, some floor standing like stands or whatever, maybe they're too low or too high, you can tilt them. It'll help with time alignment as well, making sure that things are hitting the ear at the right, you know, trajectory as well. That'll also help with time alignment. That's why manufacturers will tilt their tweeters down because their speaker is too tall or vice versa, speakers are too low, so they tilt them up helps with time alignment. So that's another way you can time align is making sure that things are angled correctly. Maybe some toe in. If you have a very wide rooms and your speaker is really you know, far apart from each other, you may want to toe them in towards the listening position. That'll also help with time alignment. If you have any sort of DSP, you can time align by setting your own delays, usually in milliseconds. You're probably familiar with like TVs or even on like a fire stick or whatever. You can set, you know, what they call lip sync, where if you're watching something but the sound is off. If you, I know you've watched a movie or a TV show where the lips are moving, you no, know, behind the sound and it bothers you. Well, you can go into the settings and set lip sync and add milliseconds to it so that the visual and the sound match each other. 
that is also time aligning and you can do that in a home theater and car audio. You can change in milliseconds, adding or taking away some delay so that you know your visuals are time aligned, in this case speakers, time aligned as well, making sure that all your speakers reach the same level. Again, the reason why you want to mess with this is because you may be closer to one speaker than the other. So if you want to time align it, you may want to change delays, add some delay, or if you're too close, take some delay away, whatever. And that's how you can time align. So you may not have that in your receiver, but you can get a mini DSP and you can add that into your system for your subwoofers, for your regular speakers, your Atmos speakers, whatever you want to do. So that's how you time align. That's what time aligning is. That's what speaker phase is all about. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please leave me some more comments down below. There's tons of other things I can talk about about phasing and time aligning and all that good stuff. So if I left something out that's super important, make sure to leave that down below in the comment section. Other people will be reading the comment section so they want to know all the tips and tricks that we can give them. So leave yours down below. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. And we will see you in the next video. Kick this guy out. Peace.